Okay, thank you guys for joining us today on our call. I am really excited for this call today. For those of you um, just joining us, we have been on our team reading The Four Color Personalities. This is a book by Big Al. In fact, here is, if you can see it, I actually have it on my iPad. You can buy it on Amazon, you can get it on Audible. It's the secret language to network marketing. You know, there's tons of personality tests out there, but this is the one I like because it's specifically for network marketing. And Big Al, if you haven't looked him up yet, his name is actually Tom Schreider, but he goes by Big Al. And he has a list of these 25 skills that new network marketers need to know. And the number one skill, the first thing that you need to figure out is this, the secret languages of your potentials. That's the four color personalities. So, you know, what if, you know, I told you guys that when someone tells you no to Plexus, because we've all heard it, they're not saying no to you. And they're not even necessarily saying no to Plexus. They're actually saying no to the words you're using. So everyone falls into one of these four color personality categories. And the sooner you learn what they are, the sooner you learn how to spot them and how to identify when you're talking to somebody what color they are. And then the sooner you learn actually how to talk to them, the more successful you're going to be in your Plexus business. Because you can get people just as excited as you are about Plexus once you know kind of what makes them tick, what words to use. And this book, if you haven't read it yet, it was a huge kind of eye opener for me. And he has a lot of great tips and even just changing a couple of your words um, in your kind of Plexus spiel can make all the difference. So a couple of um, things I want to tell everyone before we really get started. One color doesn't define anybody. So, you know, we have Sarah Taylor. She's our guest today is the red personality. Red doesn't define her. We all have usually a mix of two colors. Some have a, a, a more even mix of all four, but one color does tend to drive our decision making. And so that's why, like, we call somebody a red or a blue. And then while I talk through these, we're going to be using very exaggerated examples to get our point across on how we talk to people, okay? So briefly, let me go through what the four colors are, just to give you some background. You have red, blue, yellow, and green. And if you can think of an example of each one, it'll kind of help you visualize it a little bit. So reds, these are the folks that love to be in charge. They love a competition. They like to be the best of the best. They rarely listen, though, because they think they already know the answer because their way is the best way. Reds focus on the bottom line. They can see the forest for the trees kind of thing. They love recognition, and reds will actually make a lot of money. Reds on your team are the ones who always want the t-shirt, the planner, whatever the incentive is, they want to win the contest. Reds um, are typically your CEOs. So if you think of some famous reds like Donald Trump, um, Margaret Thatcher, top athletes, those are usually your red personalities. Blues, on the other hand, these are kind of your social butterflies. They're the ones who love being around people. They love adventure. They're spontaneous. They like to be the life of the party. They're usually too busy talking, though, to pay attention to anything. Um, I have more blue than I do red, so I love to travel. Um, we believe we're great at multitasking, but we really aren't. So when you think of blues, you think of that really social person who loves to be the life of the party, maybe like the head cheerleader or something like that. Yellows, though, so yellows are your nurturers. Yellows are the ones that are the bleeding hearts. They love to help people. They're supportive. They want to help people, and they don't even need anything in return. When you think of yellows, think of kindergarten teachers, nurses, um, and they also, they're very indecisive, but they love to help others get what they want, right? So they're always giving more of themselves to other people. You can always spot a green. You can always spot a green because they are the ones that want more information. Like they can never have enough information. They're very logical. They love to do their own research. Um, and greens like to be right, but not until they've done all of their research. Greens are like your engineers, 
your accountants, your scientists. So they tend to be way less emotional and really look at all of the data. Now greens, even though we have several on our team, in network marketing, greens are really, really hard to get on your team. They're hard to close the deal because they can never have enough information. Whereas, you know, reds, blues, and yellows, they're a lot quicker to jump on your team because yellows want to help people and Plexus is a great way for them to help people. Blues love all of the fun and the travel that Plexus provides and kind of that, you know, the social aspect. And then reds love that compensation plan and those big checks and all those prizes and that recognition. So it's the greens that are um, a little bit harder to jump on. Now, for this series, we're doing four lunch and learns. So today, we're only going to talk about the reds. And for the next few calls, we'll talk about the different colors. So I wanted to say that in case anyone's like, well, why are you not talking about the rest of the colors? So let's dig a little deeper into those reds. If you are a red, you probably already know it. Um, red is my very close. So like red and blue are my two colors. And it probably depends on my mood when I take the test which one is winning that day. Um, like I said, reds wanna be in charge, they wanna be the boss, they wanna tell other people what to do. But here's what I love about reds. When you're a red, you actually think you're a yellow. You actually think you're helping people. And you're helping people because they really don't know how to do it without you telling them how, right? So they tend to be great organizers, everything's in its place, we're bottom line people, reds, usually come across though as somebody that doesn't care and that's not true reds can't help it we don't like it when people have whiny excuses we just don't understand that but it's not because we don't care reds you guys we want reds on our team because they are the ones that make the most money in network marketing so everyone wants a red on their team in fact you want a red leader on your team and here's why because they're self-driven they do it their way, they get the job done, and they won't bother you. Not to say other colors bother us, but because reds are like, I've got this. I can do this on my own, and I am getting to the top. They'll do it. That's exactly what they'll do. But how do you attract reds? Because we talked about attraction marketing, right? So if you're a yellow green, how in the heck do you attract a red? Um, and so we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. But Reds, blues, and yellows, all of them actually make great leaders. You want all of them on your team. And so are greens. Greens, though, are the ones, like I said, that they don't stand out. They, they are harder to get on your team. So let me give you an example of like when you go to a meeting, right? Here's how you can tell if there's a, the different colors in the room. If you go to a meeting, the red is the one that stands up. They immediately take charge. They grab the mic. They tell everyone where to sit. They announce the agenda for the day, and they tell everyone where they're going to go for lunch, right? Those are your reds. The blues come in, and they just start talking to everybody. The meeting's already started. They're not even in their seat. They're still talking to two people over in the corner. Those are your blues. The yellows are the ones asking everyone what they want to do for lunch. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? And they can't make a decision. The greens have already sat down. They've already read through the agenda. They've already read the whole book that's in front of them, and they're pretty much done for the day, right? So that's kind of how you can tell. Um, how do you get a red to an opportunity meeting? So a lot of times when you guys have people tell you no, it's because you're using the wrong words. If I'm talking to a red and I ask them to come to an opportunity meeting because we're gonna learn all about the products and all the ingredients and the ingredient list and they're gonna hear testimonies of how it's helped other people, reds don't care. That's not what they wanna hear. If you invite a red to an opportunity meeting though and tell them that, that you know, they can learn how to make these big checks and that they could actually be number one in the company, that would get them to that meeting. So. Before I go into any more on how to talk to reds, I'm actually going to ask Sarah Taylor if she'll jump on. She's a red, and I just want, Sarah, if you can share kind of what gets you motivated and excited being a red for network marketing, and maybe how people who aren't reds can, can relate to other reds. Absolutely. First, I wanted to start by saying that every single color personality that Amy has mentioned can absolutely go to the top in Plexus and has. We have um, red, 
diamonds, we have green diamonds, we have yellow, um, we have blue, all of them. So none of this, you know, she said that red makes, you know, the most money in network marketing, which might be true, but if you have reds on your team and they're catapulting you, guess what? You're the one making the most money. So it's just one of those things. Like reds are attracted to network marketing because of how network marketing works. And um, we're attracted to the opportunity. We're attracted to the money aspect of it. We, we get it. Once we get the comp plan and we see the opportunity that lies in front of our face, we are going for it no matter what. So we're very, very driven by the bottom line way of thinking. So the money, the... Um, we are driven by trips because we're driven by recognition. So we're driven by all of the little things, the contests that we run, that type of thing. Every single time that um, you know you put out a contest on the page, it could be for a freaking fake plant, and I'm going to be going for it <laughs> because I just want to win. Um, and so that's that's kind of that whole red line of thinking. And Amy's so right that you know a lot of times. Um, we end up thinking that we do have a little bit of yellow in us because we are trying to help our team. And we genuinely, you know, what drives me is I do want my team to succeed and I do want my team to reach the top with me. Um, there's very much of an inclusive feeling there, but sometimes it come, comes across as more of an overbearing directive type of um, personality. So for me, um, you know, in order to motivate me and to attract me to a business, I have to know that there's opportunity there. I have to know that I have the ability to go get to the top. If I don't think that that's there, I'm going to be attracted to um, another, somebody presenting the opportunity or another leader or that type of thing. That's what's going to attract me. I have to know that the team I'm joining is going to be led um, either by a very, very strong leader or I have to be I know that the team I'm joining has a lot of potential for a huge opportunity. I hope that kind of makes sense. Does that answer your question, Amy? Yeah, yeah, it definitely does. Uh oh, sorry. Can you um, talk a little bit too about how I remember you mentioned one time that like when you're when Nikki would give you feedback as a red, um, how you kind of would take that feedback. Absolutely. So anytime that a, in a leadership position, it's very, very difficult to coach and lead red personalities. And the reason is we're very self-driven, we're very self-starters, and we don't feel like we need to necessarily be trained because we're going out there and we're seeking out the knowledge on our own. So we're the people that start on your team and head out to YouTube and watch all the videos and then just start running with whatever we see. Um, we are researchers from that standpoint because we want to make sure we're perfectionists. We want to make sure that we're doing it right, but we also don't want to hear it verbally from another person. We want to figure it out on our own. So when you're coaching a red personality, you want to help them come to the conclusion themselves. And so they need to think that it's their idea that they're changing their business in this manner, you know? So you have to kind of ask questions that lead them to the answer. Now, if somebody's trying to lead me and they're trying to tell me flat out, tell me what I need to be doing, that's going to be let met with a lot of opposition from me. Even my husband will say that. He has been married to me for eight years and I asked him before this call, I was like, okay, so how do you lead a red? And he's like, well, he's like, you have to, they, you have to come up with ideas. So I have to ask you questions. He's blue. Um, I have to ask you questions to help you get to where I want you to go. So it kind of works the same way. And what I'll tell you is when Nikki would come to me or Jamie would come to me or somebody in a leadership position would come to me and say, hey, you really need to do things this way. I would immediately come back with opposition on that and be like, oh, whatever, just kind of shoo, shoo the idea aside. And then hours later, after pondering it for a while, I'd be like, you know what, she was right. But I might not ever tell her that. So when you're leading a red personality, that can be a difficult pill to swallow. It can be a difficult thing. But You've got to, like I said, you've got to lead them into a situation where they think it's their idea that they just came up with for running their team or doing an initiative or something like that. You just kind of have to lead them to um, the water. And I will say that reds are attracted to other reds. Um, they are attracted to strong personality types, strong leaders, um, go-getters, that type of thing. We have a lot of respect for other reds and it ends up being the person that we follow because we we kind of get that personality. But two reds together also tend to have a lot of personality clashes. So it's one of those things. But if you're leading a red, I think the biggest um, 
piece of advice that I would give you is to let them fly. You have to let them fly. You have to let them run. You have to let them lead their team on their own. You have to let them try because we, and, and chances are we're going to get it right in the end. Even if we have a couple failures at first, we are so self-driven and so um, adverse to failure that we'll figure out how to make it actually work. And if we do have a couple stumbling blocks or failures along the way, at some point we're going to work at it harder because failure is not an option to a red. So we're going to work at it harder and harder and harder until we get it right. And the end result ends up being the same, but we have to be allowed to fly. We cannot feel stifled or we'll just, we'll go on to the next thing. We'll figure out a, a way in, you know, whether it's another business outside of Plexus or something like that, we need to be able to spread our wings and lead and, and train and do all those types of things. So you really do have to give them enough rope to kind of hang themselves, so to speak, which is like the worst, um, <laughs> the worst thing ever, but it's the truth. You know, you have to allow us to kind of fly and run on our own. Yes. Well, and so as a red, you know, sometimes reds are hard to, to get to the meetings and all of these things that we typically would do, the online parties, because reds don't want their time to be wasted. They don't want any of the fluff, right? They just want the bottom line. So what do you think, if anything, would get a red to any of these events? Giving them a leadership position at the event, giving them some sort of task that they can contribute, whether they need to get up and stand up and share their testimony, whether they need to stand up and host the sign-in table, whether they need to bring stuff for it, something, if you give them a task or a leadership position at that meeting, or you ask them to run their own meetings, if you give them something that makes them feel valued and a part of the hosting of the meeting and the leadership of the meeting, they're going to show up. Right. Or if you're trying to get a prospect there, alternatively, you need to talk about the opportunity and how the people leading the meeting are going to show them how to be successful in Lexus. Right. So here, so a lot of people are probably wondering, well, then how do I know if somebody's a red, if I, if I'm chatting with them online or if I just met them at the nail salon. And the great thing I love about this book is one with reds, you can, you can almost always tell if somebody's a red because it usually is a strong personality, but there are some questions you can ask about any color, right? And you can figure out maybe who they are. The one question is, what do you do for a living? So if they say, I'm a kindergarten teacher, they're most likely not a red. Or if they say, and he has examples in his book. So if he says, you know, like, I'm a guidance counselor, or, you know, another one is, I'm a party planner. Well, they're most likely not red. They're the blues. But if they're um, a manager, or if they're a supervisor, or if they're, do, if they're an entrepreneur, where they do their own business, they're most likely red. Now, we all know that we've all been in jobs that don't match our personality. So maybe that's not always accurate. So the other thing you can ask is, well, what do you do in your free time? That is a great indicator because if somebody tells you, I don't have any free time, I'm too busy, that's a red. If somebody tells you they like to stay home and read books, right, they might be a green. Now they could also possibly be a yellow. But if they like volunteer for the animal shelter, they're most likely a yellow. So if you start asking these questions and learning kind of the key characteristics, you're going to be able to identify that red and it can get to the point where you can identify those colors within just a, a few seconds of talking to someone, then you can adjust. So now that you guys know about reds, you know, if you want a red to your event, don't talk to them about the, the social aspect. Don't talk to them that it's going to be an hour long meeting that would like make a red run away fast. Uh, were you going to say something? I was going to say, and you know, the health testimonies and all that are awesome, um, but you have to frame it in a way of saying the opportunity is there because these products are so amazing. They're going to show you how to take advantage of the products and it's going to build a solid foundation for your business. And you want to lead with the opportunity there. Like that part of it is so important, you know, because even in the back of my head, when I signed up to just be a wholesale ambassador, I can tell you, I was thinking about, you know what, if I love these products, what I'm going to, I'm just going to observe, I'm going to see if there's an opportunity there for me to do it, I might just try it out. But I had to know that the, I wasn't going to try anything that ultimately would end up in failure 
because of a bad plan or something like that. So I had to know that this was a legitimate comp plan. And as soon as I sat down and said that comp plan, I was like, oh, it's on. I can do this. You know, I saw the vision. And so with the reds, you just really have to help them see that vision. Yes. And you know, anytime we talk about that comp plan, I just want to remind everyone on the call, you do not have to be at the top of the company. You do not have to be making a huge paycheck to share the business. I know I was guilty of it. I didn't share the business early on. Um, and that is a mistake. Like, do not ever be afraid to share that business. The fact that we can get five paychecks a month, that's huge. They don't have to know whether you got five paychecks this month, right? That's our comp plan, though. That's possible. And if you've made one penny on Plexus, that's more than they've made. So don't be afraid to ever share that opportunity, especially with a red. There are some key words that you want to use when you're talking to a red that is speaking their language. And if you have the book, um, he has a whole list of them. Some of those are like win, achieve, um, goals, success, keeping score, um, uh, things like dominate, money, control, power, authority, drive, vision. A lot of those things are going to resonate with a red. And, you know, also, like Sarah said, don't, because um, we're using exaggerated examples here, reds do care about people. I know when my red comes out, I feel like later I need to apologize to my team because I'm so focused on getting them to their goals that I forget maybe they're having a bad day. I'm like, no, just like post and do this and like follow up with your people, right? Doesn't mean I don't care. It's just that red has us so focused on helping everyone achieve those goals it's it's a fix it type of way of thinking somebody comes to you with a problem as a red you're like okay here's how you fix it there's no oh gosh I'm so sorry you, you immediately jump to the fix it portion and then later your your mind goes oh shoot I probably should have said I'm sorry that your dog died you know and you just it doesn't that's not how your brain the order of your brain thinking doesn't go to that and it doesn't mean that we don't care the way our brain makes those decisions and stuff is just like that. Yes. Yes. So when you, let's say if you are a green or you're a red and you're talking to a green, the more you can understand the colors, the better those conversations are going to be and the better you can even lead your team. Because what I know about greens is they need tons of information. I don't have time for information. I'm a red. Like give me the bare minimum and I'm on my way. But I cannot approach a green like that. And I cannot expect a green to be comfortable with the limited amount of information I give them. So not only is this beneficial in your potentials, it's also beneficial in how you interact with people on your team. Understanding you, but also understanding them and knowing that sometimes I need to let my yellow and green lead and not so much my, my red when I'm trying to interact with different people. So it, we've been on, guys. Do you guys have any questions? I like to keep these lunch and learns to 30 minutes. We've got about five minutes left. If you have any questions, you can chat them or unmute yourself. If not, I want to thank Sarah for being on the call as our red. And join us on next week. We're going to talk about one of the other colors. And then also I've been posting on our team page um, every, uh, every day this week to talk a little bit more about the colors and really dive into how to identify them. I'm happy to share those two on Team Taylor. I have a question Yeah. for Sarah. I remember I saw somewhere you, whenever you're speaking with potentials, you um, find out what drives them. So I'd like to know a little bit more about that in regards to red. Like if, so can you explain to me, like when you're trying to recruit a level one and you're trying to find out what drives them, but how can you tell at that moment in time, like, okay, this person's a red and then where do I go from here? So a lot of times reds will cut you off and be like, okay, just tell me the bottom line. Look, what, what's it going to cost me? What's it going to be? You know, that type of thing, that type of, um, they kind of take control of the conversation. And then second to that, it does depend on what their secondary color is too. Um, but you know, second to that, they'll ask a lot of questions like, okay, well tell me about the opportunity. What is the ambassadorship involved? Like they're very cut and dry, very much get to the point. Don't dilly dally around what you're trying to tell me. Um, those types of things. So what I try and do is I try and get the people that I'm talking to to start talking first. You know, I say, well, what interests you about Plexus? And that's a very telling thing because if they're immediately going to start 
you know, talking about one topic or another, you can pretty much guarantee that you're going to figure out what, what color personality or at least what is motivating them right then. And, you know, a lot of times when people have price hesitations, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're red. It could just mean that they're in a bad financial situation, right? So it goes way beyond just that question. It, it goes more into the questions that that person is going to be asking you. But in order to do that, you can't be pu puking plexus on them. You have to allow them to talk. So for instance, like I've had somebody, I've been explaining the products and how they work and they say, oh yeah, I want the products, I want them, but like, let's just get to the point. You know what I mean? Um, and then they ask me, how much is it? So what do you do from there? Do you just tell them, like if, you're no, if you know they're a red, and you know they're dominant and do you just say, okay, well, this is the price or do you explain the three ways to buy and keep leading them on? Like Amy said, you know, they don't have a lot of time. They don't want right. to at that point I, I would make sure well first of all you have to always say hey look I want to give you a price but I don't, I don't know what I'm giving you a price on yet so we need to figure out what products I'm recommending for you or tell me this are you interested in the business opportunity and I'll just lay it out there like that and then that way it gives them the opportunity to skip past if they really don't care about the products and they really are just interested in the business opportunity then it allows them to direct you straight to the point that they want to hear, you know? And then I always say, look, I don't want to waste your time. Tell me what interests you about Plexus and tell me what you want to get. Ideally, what would you want to get out of this situation? If then they're like weight loss, blah, 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 blah. Then, you know, yes, they're red, but they maybe not are interested in this business quite yet. But I guarantee you with a red personality, the door's always open to the business opportunity. Always. Um, they're going to be one that's easily influenced or, um, I like to say just attracted to this type of business. So, you know, it's definitely one like that. Okay. Thanks. Oh yeah. Yep. And Sarah just put a great cheat sheet in there for red. Be brief, be bright, be gone, be quick. That's how you interact with a red. All right. Thank you guys so much for being on. Bye. Thank you. Bye guys.